As societal norms change, institutions and financial devices need to change too. What is a court to do when considering a financial device, such as a trust, that includes limitations now considered repugnant or unconstitutional? The court considered that question in Estate of Wilson. The case involved two different decedents' estates. Clark Wilson's will directed that his estate was to be held in trust to cover college expenses for five male graduates of Canastota High School. The superintendent of schools nominated the recipients. The trust was administered, per its terms, for 11 years until the Department of Education instituted a Title IX gender discrimination investigation. The school district agreed to stop nominating students to Wilson's trustee. The trustee sought a judicial interpretation of the will. The surrogate's court held that the superintendent's cooperation with the trustee didn't violate the 14th Amendment's Equal Protection Clause. The appellate division modified the lower court's judgment by exercising its see prey authority to reform the will by striking the requirement that the superintendent nominate candidates. Candidates could apply directly to Wilson's trustee. Edwin Johnson's will left his estate in trust to provide college scholarships to male graduates of Croton Harmon High School. The Board of Education and the school's principal were to select the recipients. But before any scholarships could be awarded, the National Organization for Women complained to the Department of Education that the district's involvement with the trust constituted gender discrimination. Johnson's executrix, the school board president, and the state attorney general stipulated to replace the word men in Johnson's will with the word persons. The attorney general sought a judicial interpretation approving the revised will, but the court declined. Instead, it ordered the school district replaced with a private trustee. The appellate division reversed, instead exercising its see prey power to eliminate the trust's gender restriction. The Court of Appeals, New York's highest court, joined both cases for appeal. 